Hi everybody, it's Michael here with uh, part three of my review of the Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3 3D uh, printer kit. Uh, in part one, we talked about the process of ordering and uh, arrival and unboxing. In part two, we talked about the experience of building it. And uh, here in part three, I uh, want to talk a little bit about getting the, getting the machine calibrated and getting the uh, firmware set up and getting that all tweaked and adjusted and then finally giving some examples of what the prints look like. Um, first thing you want to do uh, when you're, uh, as, as soon as you turn on your machine, I should say the first thing that I had to do actually was to uh, go into the firmware. Now the the, the electronics do come preloaded with the Marlin firmware uh, from Maker Farm, and uh, that is generally set up to be pretty close. Now if you're using Linux like I'm using, uh, you're going to notice that until you do one thing, nothing's going to happen. Uh, and the reason is that the current versions of uh, Linux uh, can't quite handle the baud rate that. Um, uh, that comes set as the default on the Marlin uh, firmware. Now, if you are using a are using Windows or are using a Mac, you may not have this problem. If you're using Ubuntu like I am, uh, that's one thing you have to do. Uh, and what that essentially means is you have to open up the Arduino interface, uh, and you have to go into your firmware files, and you have to look for the configuration.h file, and uh, um, comment out the baud rate that is selected and uncomment the baud rate that you need. The uh, highest baud rate is, uh, I want to say it's uh, 23,000 uh, something, uh, and what you want is the 11.5 uh, kbits per second for if you're using Linux. Uh, once you've got that open and you are uh, in your Arduino IDE, and I would suggest that if you are going to be serious about doing RepRap, you're going to want to be familiar with the Arduino IDE. And if this is the first time uh, you've used Arduino, uh, it, actually you're about to get into a really cool world, I think. that it's, There's a lot of really nice projects that are out there based on Arduino, and, uh, and getting used to the functionality of the Arduino IDE is the first step. Okay, enough of the Arduino rant. Um, Step one, you're going to want to change the baud rate, and then there's all kinds of options that are in the uh, firmware once you're in that configuration.h file that you can you can mess around with. Uh, one that I chose to do uh, was um, with most RepRap machines, the uh, end stops are set up so that they uh, they are located on the home end of each axis, and for most RepRap machines the uh, zero, zero point on your, on your X and Y axis, axes excuse me, is this corner right here. So that's zero X and zero Y. Now you'll notice that the end stop for the Y axis is right here in the front of the machine and the Y, or excuse me, the end stop for the X axis is all the way over on the right. And so what I did, and you certainly could configure this in firmware if you wanted to, uh, being that this is my first rep wrap, just the idea of having the home of each axis be away from the end stop uh, felt a little uncomfortable to me. So what I did was in firmware went ahead and uh, reversed the X and the Y axes so that my zero zero point is now this corner up here. Uh, and that also has what I see as being an advantage of when the um, when the extruder is homed, then I've got I can see the entire build surface, and that just feels comfortable for me. Uh, the the effect of that, and I don't want to say it's a downside because I actually don't think it is a downside, is that uh, any object that you print will be facing backward. So, for example, when I print this owl, it showed up like so. And, and that's the only thing I can say about making sure that you reverse, uh, oh yeah, and also do make sure you reverse both axes. If you just reverse one, uh, if you only reverse the X or the Y, your prints will come out, uh, one of the axes will be backward. So if, for example, if you have text or something like that, it'll be either upside down or backward. So as long as you're gonna be changing one of them, make sure to change the other one with it. So your, your home point, for example, should either be when you're facing the front of the, um, uh, of the machine, it's either going to be the back right corner, should be zero, zero, 
or the front left corner should be zero, zero. If you're homing over here somewhere, you're gonna run into some kind of problems. Now, of course, that could all be overcomable in firmware, but that's uh, that's gonna be up to you, and I'm gonna leave that to your own expertise. What I did was switch it again so that when the uh, when both ac these axes are homed, they are against the end stop, and that just means that the if I wanna see the front of the print developing, I have to walk around to the back of the machine. But to me, that is very much not a big deal. Uh, I am using, per uh, Colin at Maker Farms recommendation, and I think this was actually a very nice um, uh, suggestion, is uh, on the heated plate right here, I'm not using Kapton tape or Blue Painters tape or anything else. I am using Extreme Hold hairspray. And uh, in, the, uh, in the video that Colin produced, uh, he uses a, a Fructis uh, extreme hold, uh, or sorry, Garnier Fructis Extreme Hold. I couldn't find any uh, Garnier Fructis. I'm using Aquanet Extra Super Hold, and that seems to work really well too. And I'm just spraying a coat of that on the glass uh, build plate and then uh, proceeding normally. And I've had great uh, adhesion. It hasn't been a problem at all. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to be investing in a really super wide roll of Kapton tape for a while. Uh, that is about it as far as, as, far as getting this set up. Um, the build process took about two evenings to get the whole thing together, and that included, uh, as I discussed in the last video, uh, working through a couple of challenges. And uh, this process right here took about another evening, and then I was able to create my first print. And the uh, first print, I have a video of this actual object being printed. This is the first test print that I made uh, on this printer, and it is a it is a cube. And I'm actually quite happy with how the, the corners are nice and sharp, the edges are all nice and straight. Uh, it, it is a fairly square um, in all directions, uh, and I'm, I'm just real happy with this as a first build. Uh, some other objects that I've made, uh, I printed, the, printed this owl. My daughter loves this. Uh, this one was printed at a uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height, and I think I went about 60 millimeters per second for the perimeters and about 75 uh, on the infill. It was an infill of uh, I think 20%. Um, my take on this is I want to be I want to get to where my prints are coming out at the quality that I want before I start trying to make them come out quickly. Uh, as you can see, there's a, just a little tiny bit of uh, and maybe you can't see this on the camera. There are a couple little artifacts on the back. There's a, just a little tiny bit of cleanup I need to do. But overall, for a um, for a, a first print uh, or early print, uh, I am quite happy with that owl. I think it's I think she's awesome. Uh, this is another uh, print that I did. This is an early version of uh, of the the uh, replacement Y axis end stop holder that I that I made. And uh, just to give an idea of how accurate. These, these prints can be, uh, I know that, and if you don't have a pair of these calipers, this is the standard, uh, I think they're about $12 from Amazon, um, not terribly expensive digital calipers. Uh, this part here, I designed in OpenSCAD, and I know that I spec this part to be uh, 40 millimeters on this, uh, on this edge right here, and let me get a good accurate read here, get it flat, and I don't know if you can see that, um, that says 40.00. So that's, uh, now of course these are not the most accurate calipers in the world, uh, but if I take a, a, a couple of average samples, that one's at 39.64. So all in all, this is pretty close to what I expect it to be, uh, and so I'm quite happy with that level of accuracy. Um, that is about all I can really say about the process of getting this set up and how it prints. Uh, once again, I have just been nothing but satisfied with the way this uh, this printer has come together and the way that the printer is working. Uh, again, this was my first 3D printer, the first one I've built, and I have I am incredibly happy with it. I just think it was a, a, a great bargain. It was a great value. It was a really, really fun build. It was really fun getting it set up. I learned a lot about the Marlin firmware and. Um, and, and, and the prints on it, I think, are just fantastic. Uh, I'm, you know, of course, there is a learning curve, and like any tool, uh, it takes a little bit of exposure and a little bit of experience, a little bit of repetition to really know how to use it uh, as effectively as possible. But so far, I'm very pleased with, uh, with what I've gotten for the effort that I put in. And overall, I think if anyone is considering uh, looking for a RepRap style printer, 
with a uh, with a 200 millimeter build volume uh, this is one that i really highly recommend like i mentioned before the kit comes complete it comes essentially fully loaded with lots and lots of options it's an easy build colin at maker farm is super attentive and very upfront with uh, with answering any questions it's a great stable design prints well almost out of the box I can't really think of anything I could do to improve it that I didn't already do. For example, putting in this um, extra uh, Y-axis end stop holder and then the same thing with the Z-stop. But to me, that was fun to figure those out. So overall, my experience with this kit and this printer, I'm going to give this, just because I don't believe there's such thing as perfect, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10 overall. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And, uh, and if you do decide to get one of these, I know you're going to enjoy the build. Thanks again.